Hey guys, my name is Alex and thank you very much for stopping by. Really appreciate your visit. Today, we want to create this kind of better co-design related to the previous video. And uh, the way that we're going to solve this problem will be very, very simple in Ruby. The way that Ruby handles, deals with arrays is beautiful. I can't stress that enough because I really love the way that Ruby you know, uh, does everything. So. I want to remember the previous problem, which in this case was uh, create a function that takes an array of numbers between 1 and 10, excluding one number, and returns the missing number. That's the game. You have a sequence run from 1 to 10, and we're missing 4. I want to know that we're missing 4. That's a puzzle, that's the game, and uh, uh, we had two fundamental premises. The first one is that the array of numbers will be unsorted, which in this case, uh, the problem is a little bit harder, and uh, only one number is missing. That's it. So uh, once you find the number that is missing, then you can uh, stop the execution. Very, very simple. And this was the ugly version of this algorithm, the, you know, the ugly version of the translation that we had previously with the, uh, this logic. And yeah, that's not that beautiful. And the, the, the reason uh, of uh, why this is not beautiful is because you have this uh, found local variable and you're changing this local variable. And after that, you have this array with an array, which means that you have this nested uh, for loop expression and you are using break, you are using uh, you're validating the local verbal uh, outside of the race. So, again, this is not e that easy to understand and not that you know, beautiful to read. So what I want to do is I want to kind of have, have a b better code design indicating what we are doing. First thing, the first actually Ruby tip is that I want to create this array just by using this syntax, this Ruby syntax, which is fantastic. If I execute this, I have 1 to 10. Terrible. This is not the, the result. Uh, okay, so I have, of course, to change to replace this four parentheses with parentheses. And then if I execute, <laughs> you have five. Perfect. Uh, I'm going to clean this. The next step is I don't want to validate if the number, if this item exists in this array manually, because I'm doing that manually. I'm just going uh, from all of the numbers in this array and I'm validating that manually. So you have this number, you don't have this number, and I have this local variable just to indicate if the number was uh, found or not. So that's not the best way to do this. What I can do is I can just remove all of these things and I can just say, hey, Ruby, please return the item unless you have this array unless the array includes the item. That's it, that's very, very simple. Please return the item unless the array includes the item, which means that uh, if you don't find the number, which in this case I'm calling it uh, item, please return that, return the item that you are not uh, finding in that array. If I execute this again, it should be five. <laughs> yes, here you go. So it, this is working and uh, this is a much better version of that array because you are not manipulating the array manually, you know, and you are just saying what you want. This is a more declarative approach, you know, this is coming from functional programming. If you like functional programming, you know, you are not, uh, going from all of these steps to execute the problem. And of course, you're using this method, which is very, very handy because you don't need to manipulate the array. So that's it, that's the uh, execution. Uh, and the next step, probably, I'm going to use another uh, way, Ruby way, to solve this problem. We have a little bit better way to solve this problem. And yeah, see you in the next video.